Can we just start with a thank you for John and the team? Like, what, a, what an amazing venue that we're in today. Um, as, as we travel around and, and go to different venues, I, I think this is the most unique, so really well done. Like, really appreciate it. Um, thank you for the kind introduction. And, and yes, I am an accountant by training. And it's, it, it's been a long road. And I, I recently celebrated 20 years in the uh, professional environment. And what I've, what I've really seen and what pains me still is the clients that I worked with back in 1999 are still using the same technology today, and especially in the accounting industry. And when I talk more about zero and introduce why we're talking about the accounting industry versus the small businesses we ultimately serve is because that is our go-to-market channel. And I'll touch on that during the presentation as well. Um, for anybody that hasn't heard of zero, we are an online accounting business for small businesses. And when I say small businesses, that really makes me question who we are. Because what I've experienced is quite large businesses actually use zero. And some listed businesses on the ASX in Australia actually use zero. Which really kind of makes people go, well, how is that happening? And it's simply because of the open APIs and the ecosystem that we have. Our system does debits and credits. Every accounting system out there does debits and credits. It's a binary calculation. Accounting has not changed. But because of the APIs and because of the ecosystem, it's meant that we could partner with technology providers who can scale up. And we have examples where there's people with businesses with up to 700 staff that are using zero. But our focus and our marketing is all about small business. So our opportunity is growing all the time with our ecosystem, which is just a phenomenal place to be. Um, we're, we're 12 years old. So we're not even a teenager yet, right? So we're still growing up and learning. So I'm really, really proud to be here today to share some of those learnings with you. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have during the day. Um, in that 12 years, we've, we've scaled to 1.7 million businesses globally using our platform. And we have presence in 180 countries. So the customer reach has really expanded and scaled. And I really liked what the previous speaker said about Instagram, because that's something that I'm now becoming really obsessed about. And my team are probably sick of me speaking about it at this stage. Because when you look at Indonesia as an example, Instagram are the fourth, that country, the fourth biggest user of Instagram for trading globally. Instagram, WhatsApp equals business model for a sole trader. Phenomenal. And I'd really encourage everybody to think about that as you're growing your business. Um, our ecosystem now stands at just over 700 registered, vetted uh, ecosystem partners. And they were, they're all placed on our marketplace. And James, who's from our team in the UK, will be speaking tomorrow about the technicality side of that and what that means and how to connect with our API. But today I'm going to talk about the business side of it and how we've grown that and what we've learned. One of the, the, the phenomenal things is there's actually 50,000 registered developers now on our platform in 12 years. So that gives you scale and it gives you opportunity. And I'll also talk about the opportunity in that and how we've grasped that opportunity over the last 12 years. So, we've done this, we've built an ecosystem, but what are customers actually saying? Too much choice. So we've got to this phenomenal ecosystem of 700 choices, and we've been really bullish about building the ecosystem and building choice, and the feedback that we're getting over the last couple of years is, too much, can you please pick for me? So you start to see the reviews and you know, all of the starred rating and the commentary on our app marketplace to help people choose. But I think it's fundamentally important to think about what point do you get to when you start to build an ecosystem where it gets to be too much for the consumer or it gets to be too much choice for somebody who wants an answer or some guidance in how to scale up and pick certain pieces of technology. It's been discovery for us. And we're very conscious to reflect on what we've done and where we can take our business. And that's something that you know, we're really keen to share with the community, the developer community, business community, and all of our partnerships. 
because I think as we reflect on it, we can only really understand the direction that we need to go in next. When we look at um, the 700 certified partners, we actually only have 18 domiciled in Asia at the moment. So I think there's a huge opportunity for somebody to look at that and actually come and speak to us about having a physical presence here. And our business opened office here three years ago with two people and we've just gone over 35 and we'll soon go to 50 people. We opened Hong Kong last year and I'd really like to encourage people that are locally based in the community to come and speak with us. I think there's a huge opportunity as we look outside of Singapore, we look at HR systems, we look at payroll, we look at consolidations, timesheets, anything that a business owner really needs, we would really, really like to speak to you. Um, what is the opportunity? We've recently done a TAM exercise for our business in Asia, and it's one of the most difficult things that I think we've taken on, because we have an English platform. And we really have to look at the English-speaking market. But when I look at the opportunity in that, there is actually developers in the Middle East that have converted zero into Arabic. So when we think about what, the, what that opportunity provides us is to go into different markets really quickly. I haven't found anybody yet changed into Chinese for us, but we're working on it. Um, the mission, mission of zero, is probably the biggest, you know, wildest statement that Rod Drury, our founder, has ever made. You know, and ultimately we're trying to rewire the small business economy, and we're trying to reach the most fragmented market globally, which collectively is the most powerful market. And how do you do that? And you can only do it with a platform. But you've got to look at the common denominator for your customers. And one of the reasons why we work with the accounting channel is that the business owner needs to stay compliant and pay tax. So that's where we found our niche and found our channel. I don't know, has anybody seen this slide before? But it's one of my favorites. And it's the most simplistic explanation. Oh, sorry, my water disappeared. Let's just have some water. Thank you. Of how we believe platforms truly beat products. I had an iPod still buried somewhere, probably in my parents' house, under the bed in a box. But when you think about what has happened in the last 10 years and the speed of change, we all really have to be thinking about platforms and talking about platforms because shipping a product is probably not going to get you to the mass scale that maybe you want to get to. <clears throat> The ecosystem at zero has flourished greatly over the last 10 years. And when we look at the opportunity that's come through the ecosystem, I wanted to hone in on one area. So um, our product in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK has the ability to lodge tax returns for business owners straight to government. So API, not e-filing, not online tax lodgement, like straight through. When we look around the ecosystem now, globally, there are developers building the equivalent of that service for business owners and have already connected to the government services. And if, like a really great example is Online Pajak, who are from Jakarta. And it's a couple of French guys that went to Indonesia four years ago and built incredible relationships with a government that probably don't have the greatest reputation but they've built the APIs. So now, because of this opportunity, they've connected directly with us, and we've suddenly accelerated our growth into Indonesia, and we don't have any staff there. Online Pajak raised $25 million late last year, and I reckon they're the first cloud tax system globally that's ever had VC funding of that level. So when we step back and look at the ring around the ecosystem, there is a huge opportunity. And guess what? Now we have a tax provider in the Philippines that's doing the same thing. Online Pajak are launching in Singapore because the Singapore government want to have API tax services. So all around our business, 
what has happened to us is we've started to build the ecosystem because we wanted to reach opportunity. But now because we've built the ecosystem, we're getting pulled into new opportunity that we really didn't expect to have this quickly. And the developers that have linked up with us have, give, have afforded us this you know, wonderful opportunity to move faster. There is no way, um, and not to criticize our team, that we could build that tax system for Indonesia as quickly as they have. And that is the purpose of the zero ecosystem. It's to find that opportunity to give others the opportunity. And when I speak to the team at Online Pajak, they're, they're looking you know, light years ahead. Like I think they'll look at payments, they look at different services, because they have the final line of defense for a business, which is tax return and compliance. And nobody wants to get into trouble from the tax authorities, right? And everybody pays, pays the taxes. So in terms of investing in the community, um, it's really, really important that we are the heart of the ecosystem. Zero should essentially be invisible. Nobody wants to think about their accounting too much. So we want to see, can we become invisible in there, but still be the driver and still be at the heart of the business owner's operations. But on a day-to-day -day basis, they're dealing mainly with the front office. That's where all of their trading and interaction with their customer is. How we physically build the community in Asia is we've recently rented a new office space in Singapore um, with a bigger space so that we can start to bring in our ecosystem partners, developers that are interested in talking to us, and physically be the heart of the ecosystem and physically be the heart of the community. And the reason why I keep saying physically is because we need to sit down and understand everybody's business deeper because you can go out and create amazing connections with a lot of people and not get anything out of it. There's a lot of partnerships that go to waste and I've seen it happen in zero over time. Everybody wants to be connected because you have an open API. But are you actually like solving a problem? Are you helping a customer need? Or is it for a photo opportunity? And I think that we really need to be conscious as we keep building our ecosystem that we spend more and more time rather than just connect. And that's bringing in the human element. And it's one of our big values at Zero. It's hashtag human. It's great to say that we have an ecosystem of 700, but we're working hard to actually build more of a human and physical connection with each one of those businesses. Growing innovation. Um, the speed of innovation is, is just lightning fast in Asia. I think from the previous um, presentation, you would have heard you know, China, Instagram, WeChat, Grab are going into you know, phenomenally different places at the moment when they, they actually started out as a ride hailing service. If you scroll through Grab, you keep going. They are building services and services and services, and they want you to live in that, that platform. And that's one of a, challenge, a big challenge for us. How do we keep bringing innovation? <clears throat> As an accountant, it's very hard to innovate accounting. It's debits and credits. And I really challenge some of the, the, you know, my, my peers and the, that lead the business in other parts of the world. Like, you know, I think we've made it cool and cool enough. But you can't change it. And you can innovate how you work with it and interact. But really what we're looking for is innovation around the business. So we think that we've automated <clears throat> and really developed the back office of a business. And I, I strongly believe that the innovation will happen at the front office. So that's where we're looking for our partnerships to help us grow that innovation. Some of our newest APIs. <clears throat> so we started to look at what other APIs could we expose. And when I'm, when I'm talking about Zero, I actually see Zero as a collection of APIs. So we publish our APIs online. They're all available on developer.zero.com. We want to encourage people. And what we've looked at is, where are people pulling information from in terms of what they're using the APIs for? What are they consuming? And out of that, a few years ago, we looked at building <coughs> our own add-on, our own ecosystem partner that was owned by Zero, And it's been called Zero Projects. And that's something that was really a challenge for us. How do we explain that strategy to partners that are already in the ecosystem 
that provide that service? Well, it has to come down to choice. And it's a really challenging conversation to have because we don't want to be cutting anybody's lunch. And we've encouraged people to join our ecosystem so that they could grow. But I think that's what keeps us on our toes and really keeps us focused on bu building the best service that a customer wants. And it will always come back to what the customer needs and the choice that they have. What we do to support our ecosystem partners. So we bring you into the community. We run some pretty huge events. We did a road show here last November just for accountants from accounting firms and we had 900 people come along. We did one in Hong Kong that had 400. But when I ran some of sales in Australia and was based in Melbourne, a road show was getting 13,000 people. So we want to expose that community to our ecosystem partners not only physically at those events, but online. And this is where we house a lot of our partners in our app marketplace. So just like the app store, there's a zero app marketplace where you can go on and choose and review. And we want the support and we want our customers to understand what you can do. So we're there to help with some of the marketing around it as well and how best to uh, explain what your product does or what your platform does. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I spoke about innovation earlier, you know, growing the demand for the innovation. Well, it's events like this, isn't it? I get up here and say, hey, come and speak to us. We've got to figure out what we can do for business owners. But the chap that's pictured is from a business called The Living Seas. And we re really learned a lot from him when we got to know him. You know, scuba diving business needs to be offline, needs to be out, out in the sea as much as possible. But it provided different opportunities for us to introduce them to payroll providers and payments platforms that link with zero, so that he could actually do business when he's out in international waters, right? But how do we grow the demand? Well, we've got to think, we've got to keep coming back to our customer. And we've got to be obsessed with our customer. And on days like today, and even last night at the event, it's very much talking about ourselves what our business does, what I can do, how do we connect. But we fundamentally need to change some of that conversation and only then can we think about growing innovation. We've got to keep talking about the business owner and who we're servicing. And it's a, it's a really important topic for me. You know, coming out of high school at 19, my boss, he didn't teach me everything about accounting. He taught me about people and he taught me how to talk to people and how to engage with people, because he provided that service. Understanding what the customer needs. And we're all here to talk about APIs, yeah? But fundamentally, I'd love to see us talk a little bit more about our customers today. This is a screenshot of the, the app marketplace and the engagement in there. When you go in, you can actually search by popularity as well. And I'll call out some of the biggest um, technology partners that we have, um, namely one would be Receipt Bank, who have grown to be a phenomenally huge business globally, who partnered with Zero in the very early days. I wish we had bought them in the early days. But when you look at what they've done, they've worked very closely with us to understand the problems that we're trying to solve. And they've solved some massive problems. And it's as simple as OCR technology for receipt scanning and getting the information into zero as quickly as possible in a very, in a, obviously in a correct manner. So the opportunity is in there. I'd really encourage everybody to have a look at our marketplace to see how we're talking about our technology partners. Because it's really important that that's sometimes a customer's first experience after they land on zero.com. So what we've also tried to do is you know, increase the level of discoverability. So when somebody is in the Zero platform, they're starting to get served up the opportunity to discover the ecosystem. And they're starting to understand that there is more opportunity out there. And hopefully we haven't bored them too much with debits and credits. So it's taking them on a journey through our ecosystem and figuring out what choices they need to make. This is the view, a very simple view of what an accounting firm gets. And this is called Zero HQ. 
So they get to see a list of all their clients in one place, and we serve up suggested areas that they should look for for their clients so that they can go and talk to their clients about a solution. So we're always thinking about how can we, how can we serve the 700 partners up? How can we get it in front of the user? How can we get it in front of the accountants that we truly see as the, the professional advisor? And this is a real challenge for the accounting firms because rarely have they been aggressively or fundamentally relying on their business operations that is recommending technology. Their biggest, the sales and marketing department for an accounting firm is the tax office. That's the way the business works. They don't go out and market themselves. They have to be compliant, so you have to use an accountant generally. In-app recommendation, so if you're in there and you're doing certain things on the platform, we will start to serve up some ideas for you as well. You know, to really think about what you might need next. So if we see somebody playing around the payroll section, we will start to serve up payroll choices. Let me skip through that. So with the, with the partner portal, each one of our ecosystem partners gets an area where you can log in, you can see some in um, insights into how your business is performing, you get to connect with the Zero team. We have people here on the ground in Singapore that you can come and speak to and engage with, and they are there to grow our ecosystem, but also for our sales teams and for our leadership teams to understand what you can actually do so that when we're doing our larger events or when we're rolling out content, we can share some of those insights with our customers. So when we go back and think about platforms and really think about who benefits, well, obviously, we should all benefit. I don't think everybody's out there doing a not-for-profit technology company. So really, we look at the interactions, the level of connections that you have with Zero. You know, what are we looking at in terms of you know, potential revenue share? What are we looking at in terms of events? And we look at also you know, the fact that we're going to be running some pretty big events in November, and we'll have a limited number of slots. So to grab some of those slots, it's really important that you're building a relationship with us so that when we do an event to our accounting partners, that you've got a front and center opportunity to actually explain what you can do. And one of, one of the events I'd like to talk about is the Accounting and Finance Show, which was held for the first time in Singapore last year. And I had 4,000 business owners come, and it blew us out of the water. We were really not expecting it. But thankfully, and hindsight is a great um, reflective tool, um, we had bought platinum sponsorships, so we were at the front. Um, and that worked out really well for us. But I think in terms of where you need to engage and where to find your customer, you should really look at the bigger events like that to get your voice out. So I touched on advisors earlier on and accountants. And I really wanted to explain, again, why we've picked accountants as our main go-to-market channel. And about 85% of our recognized revenue comes through the accounting firms. So when we try to serve small businesses, we cannot go out and find every small business globally, and we cannot have the reach digitally to connect with all of them. So we had to find a common denominator, and that is being compliant. And whether that's tax compliance or corporate compliance, like ACRA here, um, you generally need a professional advisor to help you. What we needed to do then was actually build tools for the accountants. So we started out building a platform that was really focused on solving problems for small businesses. But to engage the accounting firms, we had to build tools for them. So we've built some really great reporting centers, really great insights information for the accountants to learn this. And as we go through our journey in Asia as well, we're learning more about how the accounting firms work. So it's not as easy as just saying, we're going to work with the accounting firms. This is where we're going to focus, and we can sit back and watch this channel go. Really need to spend time to understand their businesses. And then you might figure out, oh, that's why Zero hired me. So there's a lot of accountants in Zero. There's a lot of us that have come into the business to help explain our developers and our, you know, our, our go-to-market teams how accountants think, what's important to them, and how we can actually help them and their businesses, because ultimately, they are starting to control the relationship with the client. 
and they are the ones lodging the tax returns and signing off on the financial statements, which is really vital to their business. But we have a challenge, because accountants historically did not want to recommend. They are risk averse by nature. They don't want to recommend technology solutions, platforms, products. So how do we do it? Well, this has pivoted us into a very education levy heavy strategy where we are spending time educating the accounting firms on how best to use our platform and we go through a process of teaching and they have to change their processes so they might go from a desktop debits and credits uh, uh, system into a cloud debits and credit system we actually work really differently because now with our API connections with the banks so OCBC, DBS, HSBC UOB, yesterday's transactions are in the Zero platform this morning at 7 a.m. So the accountant who had to wake up today and download the bank statement and then start to type it into the system does not have to do that work anymore. So therefore they have to change. And where we bring our ecosystem partners into that fold is we start to introduce and we start to make sure that our accounting partners are comfortable with understanding the opportunity because this is a big change management piece for them too. And it takes us, sorry, it takes us quite a while to build that trust because they fundamentally don't want to mess up anything with their client. They don't want to make mistakes. They don't want to recommend the wrong technology. So we have to spend a lot of time, which means the sales cycle actually becomes quite long when actually our 30 day trial period should be our sales cycle. But it's building that that scalability. And you might ask, well, why, what about accounting firms? There's some accounting firms in Singapore that have 15,000 customers. That's one firm. And if we can go in and teach all of their accountants, their staff, and engage with them, and actually build trust with them, and get them up to speed, because a lot of them want to know about cloud technology, that's given us the opportunity for them to go and speak to their clients about our platform. So we actually don't engage directly with their clients. That's not how we work. We will help the accountant, and we'll get the accounting firm up to speed, and we're always available to talk to them if they need some help, but we could not service all of those clients face to face. How do we unlock it? I think when you're picking a channel, you really gotta you know, really understand deeply what they want. So you've got You've got this multi-edge approach to, well, who is the customer and who controls the customer? And some of our challenges are, I'll go to an accounting firm or the team will go to an accounting firm and they will tell us that their customer doesn't want that. And I would guess that they haven't asked them or they haven't surveyed their client base. And what we're starting to see is accounting firms lose clients to other firms that are providing technology services. So for anybody that thinks maybe they have a product or a platform that could connect with us, we're happy to share with you some of the challenges around trying to unlock that channel. I'll wrap up on this thought. Um, many, many years ago when I studied, studied business studies in school, some of the very simplistic messages that came out from the books that we used to read were starting a business or opening a business or growing a business, what are your barriers to entry? And I, I strongly believe that that doesn't make sense anymore, especially when we think about APIs. So the barriers to entry are now down. Our APIs are published online, and like a lot of you, I'm sure they are too. So what are you going to do with it? Because we were told and thought that there was this barrier to doing business, and now it's gone. And I really encourage everybody to think about that you now have the opportunity. You've already taken a leap past that. And that's what APIs have done for us and technology platforms. So thank you for your attention today. Thanks to John and the team. I hope you have a great day. And I guess if there's any Q&A, I'll... Or... Thanks, Kevin. I don't know too many accountants, but I certainly don't know any with tattoos. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, do we have any questions for Kevin?
So when you go around with this new channel for you know advisors or accounting firms, like how do you balance the? I mean, is it because Zero has already built a very strong tech platform, you're able to do it, or uh, or you know, or will you focus on say discoverability of the 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 APIs and the apps that you already work with? Like how do you balance the two? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. So our you know ultimately. We, we need to grow in the region. So acquisition and customer acquisition for us is, is greatly important. Um, we know that there's a, a tipping point when we can engage with the ecosystem and have, you know, especially choices around payroll or HR systems. And that, that's been a focus that we've really achieved in the last couple of years. And we found payroll providers both in uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Malaysia to actually help us bridge that gap in terms of, I would call it a product gap, because we have payroll in our system in other countries that we've built. Um, in terms of how we build the channel, it, it is actually some like old school grit. Like we've got to go out to the accounting firms and, and talk to them and introduce ourselves. So sitting back and pumping out digital media or content definitely works, but for the accounting firms that are not engaging online and are generally not as exposed to technology, we, we actually have to go and, and meet them and sit down and talk to them. And a lot of the angle on that is actually to work with the professional accounting associations so that they give us, I guess, you know, to, to help us build trust with the accounting firms. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you cool. very much. Thanks to both of our keynote speakers this morning.